All right, here we go. We got sorted out. Apologize everyone for being a little late. We had some technical difficulties here in North Carolina, but hello to the Wild Planet family. My name is Josh Perry, and today I'm gonna be doing a live just answering some questions that you all asked about me and my life and my favorite foods from Wild Planet, and I'm gonna be showing you my go-to meal, which was a common question that I get asked quite a bit as well. But um, we'll start off, for those who don't know me, my name is Josh Perry. I'm a professional, former professional BMX athlete, a holistic health coach specializing in the ketogenic diet, and I just started public speaking to share my story and all that I'm doing to help people. But with that being said, I'm also a four-time brain tumor survivor, living with four brain tumors today. I've gone through the ins and the outs of surgeries and radiation and uh, the third diagnosis, which was just two years ago. I adopted the ketogenic diet 100% and um, after one year and two year MRI follow-ups, there was no progression of the tumors, either of them or I, any four of them uh, with no meds, no treatment, no surgery. And so, yeah, I'm just really passionate about sharing and I love Wild Planet just because the wild caught aspect of it, the sustainability, but the integrity behind the brand and the messaging is just everything that I believe in. And I just did a post about this on my account um, about walking your talk and it's something I, I believe uh, massively in and I try to do the best I can to to walk my talk anything I say or suggest or advice I, I'd practice myself and um, that's just something I'm really passionate about so uh, let's see my favorite wild planet product would have to be which is it's so insane to say this because I never thought that I'd be eating fish despite being from Cape Cod which is interesting to a lot of people but my favorite product is the wild sardines you know and I, I love specifically let me flip this screen let's see how we do this so the sardines in the olive oil and lemon juice. Now people probably don't like the fact that I'll eat them anywhere, especially on planes because of the smell, but they taste great and they're great for you. And I already mentioned the wild caught sustainability aspect of it, but one of my favorite reasons why I choose Wild Planet and these foods especially, like I said, is the integrity behind the brand. There's a lot of brands out there that do this or that, but really the messaging is what stands out to me. But also the sardines in particular, they're high in omega, uh, omega-3s. And those are really great for inflammation and the brain and all other aspects of health that come from you know regulating inflammation and taking care of our brain and prioritizing it. So it's just, uh, yeah, there's many more reasons, but that's just like the bulk of uh, why I choose them. They taste delicious too, and it's, it's interesting. But I was supposed to build a meal for you guys today, and I have all the ingredients right here, minus a few because it's Friday and I need to go grocery shopping. We usually do that on Sundays. But I'm also doing an interesting fasting window with my girlfriend Jackie. We're switching them up from doing like a 2 to an 8 p.m. eating window to a 10.30 to 4.30 eating window. So it's a little after 2 my time on the East Coast, and so... I'm, I got the ingredients minus some, but I'm gonna show you kind of what my go-to meal is and how I use uh, Wild Planet Sardines minus straight out of the can when I'm on a uh, trip traveling somewhere. So, let's see. So, of course, we got the big base of spring mix and you can use you know spinach or whatever you want, but spring mix is my choice. And then we got the avocado for healthy fats and fiber. Um, of course, the Wild Planet Sardines. We got the lemon and uh or yeah the lemon juice and olive oil and then one of my favorite things to add some crunch is uh organic pecans and then what's missing before i get into the other ingredients what's missing is i love pickled okra so i always throw on pickled okra in there and then it could be a host of anything lately i've been into um baking or frying up or not frying but sauteing up uh, brussels sprouts and then once they cool down a little bit throwing those on top some people do broccoli, you could do cooked asparagus, I mean, you could do tomatoes, onions. I see we got garlic, onion, turmeric, salt, pepper, love it all. I also do add salt um, and pepper, but what else goes on there? Uh, one of my favorites, the Primal Kitchen Ranch Dressing. They make a whole bunch of different dressings in avocado oil, and then I'll switch them up. The next three items will be one or the other. So I'll either do some olive oil or MCT oil or add extra avocado oil. And again, it's different for everyone, but I specifically follow a ketogenic diet. So it's a high fat, moderate protein, very low carb diet, which is a specific biomarker to actually tell how low carb you need to be for your body. But you know, we gotta get the fats in and it's gotta be healthy fats. So that way we can support the brain and the rest of our, our, our health. So again, that's uh, just a quick little look into what I do for my go-to meals. And it's just, I love the salads and it just, it's, you get that bulk from the vegetables, which is super satisfying. You get the healthy fats in there, the proteins. 
you spice it up however you want, you know, you top it however you want. And depending on which way of eating you're following, you know, you make it work for you and there's no excuses. You can put that in some Tupperware and bring it anywhere you want. We do glass Tupperware, um, just my way of preventing more chemicals in my body. But we also have little mason jars where we pour the dressing and the oils in and mix it all up, spices and all that. You can bring it anywhere. So it's great. All right, so now we got a list of questions and I'm gonna do my best to not be long-winded. I have a tendency to talk a lot. You probably already gathered that. I love sharing and we got uh, like nine or 10 questions and so we're gonna run through those and any other questions you guys wanna know, anything you're curious about, just throw it in the comment section. But uh, again, you know, I'm a former professional BMX athlete fighting for brain tumors. I've been in the X Games, I've traveled the world, uh, including Iraq to perform. And I followed the ketogenic diet after multiple brain tumor diagnosis. And so, you know, any questions that arise from that, I love talking mindset. I love getting deep into psychology. So uh, just put them in there. But first, I'm going to go through these questions that some of you have submitted. And the first one is, what is your go-to nutritious meal? Well, I just kind of spoiled that one by sharing my go-to lunch. And it's just... It's so easy to get all the things that are required for a healthy meal. You know, you get your vegetables, you get your fats, your proteins, you can add some spices, which are all, you know, the ones listed are um, helpful in reducing inflammation. And it's just a good way to nourish the body. And you don't have any of the toxins, the chemicals. This is all whole food. I mean, the the processing that goes into the oils, the dressing could be argued, but at the end of the day, it's still whole food ingredients. There's minimal processing. And being out here in North Carolina, I'm very grateful to have a lot of farms locally. So even, you know, we have the farmer's market right down the road. Our Whole Foods is, uh, it partners with a lot of local farms and it's just a great way to get healthy food with little to no toxins in it. Uh, number two, do you have any advice for people looking to lose weight or eat better? In your opinion, what should be their attitude towards nutrition and training? All right, so there's a couple parts to this. Number one, do you have any advice for people looking to lose weight or eat better? The simplest thing I can say that helped me and that I help my clients with and anyone I share this with is really audit what you're eating, what you're consuming. If you're drinking sugary beverages, even if it's organic juice, that's a lot of sugar. Um, you can cut that out as a way to start. But really just auditing what, what you're doing and getting clarity around your choices and limp, like, you know, take a day where you just track everything you eat and look at, see how much carbohydrates, how much sugars, how much processed foods you eat, um, and things like that. It's just really about getting awareness. If you're looking to lose weight and eat better, again, eating, be there's two components to this. Eating better would be look at real food, whole food, you know, and whole food doesn't mean whole foods, the grocery store, but just whole food in general, like chicken or turkey or beef or fish, um, avocados, nuts and seeds, any vegetables of your choosing, um, you know, uh, olives, you know, things like that. Look at whole foods. And then when you go to, you know, like olive oils or, um, or oils in general, olive, avocado, MCT, coconut, or dressings, look at the brands that use whole food ingredients that you can actually pronounce and you know what they are. If you, could, if you were to see them, you could, you know, pick them out. So it's really just starting there. Like anyone that wants to lose weight initially, it's really auditing your choices, drinking more water, um, eating whole food, and cutting out the crap, you know, the carbonated drinks, um, the refined sugars, the alcohol, the grains um, to a degree, you know, um, processed foods. It's just start simple. And then the next piece of this question is, what should we be doing, or what should they be doing uh, towards their attitude with nutrition training. That's personal. You know, at the end of the day, you really got to figure out why you're choosing to do something. You know, at the end, every New Year's, people set these New Year's resolutions, and it's, I, I, I argue there's no why to it. You know, I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, cool. Well, there's a mindset thing I love to share is like, it's not lose because that implies you want it back, it's remove. But then it's really like getting clarity around your why. Like, why do you want to do any of this? How's it going to affect you down the road? How's it going to affect other people in your life? Family, friends, coworkers, strangers, things like that. It's really about getting clarity around why you want to be looking at changing your food or why you want to be looking at moving, you know, in a different manner, whether that's going to the gym or playing some sports or going on walks or doing yoga, or Pilates or bike rides or hikes or canoeing, any of those things. It's really about getting clarity around why you want to do them. And that's like, yeah, your attitude should just be getting clarity around you specifically, your purpose for those changes. And then really looking at, like I love sharing, looking at your brain's health. I, I, I love challenging people and because I didn't do this before, but it's really, do you think about the health of your brain every day? Anything you do, do you think about how it affects your brain? Because if we can prioritize our health 
of the or uh, the health of our brain, the rest is just a ripple effect. It's all a byproduct. So I think really it's just getting clarity about, around what you're doing and why you're doing it and really focusing on brain health. Number three, do you prefer to eat before or after a workout? What kinds of meals do you prefer to eat pre and post workout? Okay, so a couple questions in one and a couple components per question. So we'll start with the first. Do you prefer to eat before or after a workout? Okay, so this takes time to transition and everyone's gonna be different. But for me, I personally like to go in a fasted state to a workout. So I'll work out towards the end of my fast. And my girlfriend Jackie and I, it just seems to work well for us because I feel lighter, I don't feel full. And actually, if you eat too soon before a workout or any kind of exercise, the blood's all rushing to your digestive tract to break down that food and to give it energy and things like that. So it's taking it away from your muscles. And there's lots of things that go into that. So personally, I prefer to eat after a meal or after a workout, and it's actually much later. It's not right when I get home. We have like a 50 minute drive, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll shower, we'll get all cleaned up, ready for the day, and then we'll make some coffee, and then we'll eat later. So like, I usually don't eat for like another two, three hours after a workout, but now that I changed my fasting window, it's like an hour after a workout. But again, that's all individualized, and that's a, that's a transition, that's a journey. You don't just start out just like going to a fasted workout, and that's actually what I advocate against. You know, you wanna make sure the body's feeling comfortable. All these different changes, especially with the ketogenic diet and then fasting and working out, it's all a stress, and it's a good stress, but if we add too much at once, it can be, you know, uh, it could go against us and, and rather than being beneficial. Now, the next part of it is what kinds of meals do you prefer to eat pre and post-workout? So pre-workout, or yeah, pre-workout meals, it's basically just water and electrolytes. That's it. It used to be like a protein and fat shake, you know, some good quality protein powder, throw in some fats, whether it's avocado, uh, nuts and seeds, or coconut oil, whatever you want, coconut milk, things like that, blend it all up with some spinach and call it a day. But I, I prefer to go on a facet, or in a fasted state on empty stomach. Um, but I will drink a bunch of water. Actually, one of my part of my morning routine is drinking water with a splash of lemon juice and an eighth a teaspoon of salt. I, uh, I choose to use Redmond's real salt, pure salt, and you don't wanna use the white refined salts. Um, that's a whole nother story. But uh, that's actually my pre-workout, is that in the, I just started using electrolytes, you know, uh, adding electrolytes into my water, it tastes great. That's a good pre-workout, and it gives you the energy you need and helps the brain. Um, but post-workout, so I'll give you an idea for what I had today. So I got done with my workout at 9.30, and I sat down to eat at 10.30, and we had some scrambled eggs, we had avocado, um, we had some, uh, some, uh, sausages and, um, I think we had some leftover Brussels from the night before topped with a bunch of salt and pepper. Um, that's, you know, quick, easy thing to do. It's easy to digest, but again, there's, I feel like if long as you're eating whole food and you're figuring out what works for you, the only way to tell is to see how your body responds. There is no right or wrong when you're eating real whole food and not the processed junk. It's just about how your body responds and then, you know, kind of navigating it from thereafter. But another good post-workout could be, like, a, like I said, a quality protein and fat shake. You know, you're getting the quality proteins in there, you're getting the fats, you're replenishing, and maybe you're throwing some blueberries and some spinach in there. Uh, a little trick is, uh, people think I'm crazy, but like, put a little bit of salt in there. You know, just a pinch or two, like an eighth of teaspoon is a good place to start. And um, that just gives, uh, you know, all, all the, you know, the necessary components for a uh, post-workout. You know, you get in there, you get the water in there, it's all good. Number four, is there any food you miss eating? Now, I was actually, when I was looking at this, these questions earlier, and I was thinking about this one in particular, I was just thinking like, I was gonna give the most cliche answer, and that's like, no, I don't miss eating certain things, but, there needs to be more context around that. I've been on this journey for a good nine years now when I actually started auditing my choices with nutrition and fitness and mindset and all these things. And when it comes to food, food's a tricky thing because there's a lot of psychological um, components to it. There's a lot of you know addictive properties to the brain and a lot of past conditioning that we didn't, it's subconscious, we didn't really realize that we were building along the way. So there's a lot of ties to food and how we emotionally feel and think and all these ins and outs. And so... Where I'm at now is very different than where I was at even two years ago. Because again, two years ago is when I got a third brain tumor diagnosis and really got hardcore about learning and implementing a ketogenic diet to where I actually got a glucometer, started testing my blood and all these things. So do I miss eating certain foods? I, there's, there's not much I miss because I don't 
I don't miss the processed foods and the junk foods because even um, years past when I've tried them again, it, it didn't taste the same, it tasted horrible, and it made me feel like garbage. And then now that's my motivating factor is how well is this food going to make me feel after? And that's how I'm not going to miss it if it makes me feel like crap. Some things that I do miss uh, would be like a good ice cream combo or something, you know, um, or some pizza and like sushi, but I do still consume those foods in moderation at certain times. And I do, I could follow like a 90, 10% rule, 95, 5% rule, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think it's different for everyone. If you're someone with a therapeutic reason to avoid certain foods. So if you're on a ketogenic diet for a therapeutic reason, you probably don't want to add those foods in. But for someone like myself, you know, I, I feel good once in a while having a roll of sushi. It's still whole food though at the end of the day. Like, so it's like, it's not what I used to eat. What I used to eat, I'm gonna do a vlog on this actually. What I used to eat when I was wake up, I eat a couple of toaster strudels, <laughs> I have a glass of orange juice, and then lunch would be two boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese, a foot long from Subway, and then throughout the day, I'd have a two liter Dr. Pepper every day and a bunch of Hostess you know, pastries. And then at night, it would be whatever fast food or something that I could find on top of uh, copious amounts of sugar and alcohol, and it was just terrible. So when people talk about cheat meals, my cheat meal is still real food. It's not anything processed or garbage. It's It just doesn't fall along with the ketogenic diet, but I know I did the work to be able to do that, and then later on, I'll be fine. I just do an extended fast, have some more fat, things like that. So is there any food I miss eating? Not really, because I didn't really eat much real food to begin with back then, So, um, I, and I love everything I do. And again, like I was saying, it sounds cliche, but it, it really isn't. When you, when you take the time to adapt and you start eating real food, your taste buds change, the wiring in your brain changes, you feel better, and that's like another connection, and just, you don't miss it, because you, you know how you felt before, and then you know how you feel after eating it, and I know how I feel now, and it's so much different. So, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't really eat food back then, I ate a bunch of food-like products, you know, once I left home, that was it. So, um, yeah, I don't really miss eating anything. I, I, I fill those those voids, if you will, every now and then. Like I go to Whole Foods and I get real pizza or like something like that and like it's once in a while. And I'm very uh, particular about it. And the other thing is like sushi. And it's still, it's like rice, you know, so it's real food and then fish and other vegetables. So, um, yeah. Number five, do you have a favorite workout? Um, I, I like, I really enjoy working out in general. So I don't know if that means like, do I have a favorite workout in the gym or a favorite workout in general like exercise? But, um, I, despite what people think of me being a professional athlete, you know, I didn't start going to the gym until a couple of years ago. And so the first time I stepped into the gym I train at now, um, in Cary, North Carolina, I hadn't ever touched a barbell in my life unless it was the one time I used in a Smith machine at Planet Fitness. Um, so I love, literally love everything I do right now in the gym. And then outside of that, like hiking is, you know, a fun sport for me. Um, or I guess it's a sport, not really a sport, but exercise activity, uh, BMX, of course. I love mountain biking. Um, yeah, golf, you know, like, the, like I just, just golf. Like there's so many things, like just being outside and being active is fun for me, but it's particularly in the gym. I don't know. It's all just still so new to me and fresh to me that I just enjoy it. I love how I feel and I've been able to build strength, which translates to the BMX bike and it's helped my riding. So I just love anything. Any, I'm a very, as you can tell, I'm all over the place. I'm a very active person. I love moving. I love doing things. If I'm sitting too long, I get antsy. That's why I don't really play video games. I actually, I just connected my uh, my brother's Xbox One after four years of not, I got rid of my Xbox a while ago, my TV and everything. And yeah, but I like to do anything that's fun and moves the body. Number six, how often do you work out? All right, cool. So I work out at least four days a week. When I'm home, at least when I'm not traveling and going everywhere, it's a little bit difficult when you're traveling and especially time zones and you're feeling tired and things like that. But when I'm home, it's like a Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday and Friday. My girlfriend and I have a morning routine. She's actually an athletic trainer at Durham Academy, a private high school. So it's a pretty cool story that we have, how we uh, got connected. We'll have to do a video and a story about that. But yeah, it's part of our morning routine. So she doesn't have to be to work till noon. So we're able to go together, take our time, come home, make breakfast, things like that. If we're eating breakfast, which now we're eating windows sooner. So we are 
But um, yeah, I, we go about four days a week. And then beyond that, we're super uh, active in everything we do. We like to be outside. We like to do things. We love. We just got back from Arizona, going to see the Grand Canyon. We were going to hike, but it snowed, so it was a little dangerous. But uh, yeah, we just love doing things that are outside. But yeah, do you have a, um, how often do you work out? Four days a week at least. And then add in BMX riding, mountain biking, golfing, anything, like hikes, you know, anything like that on top of it. Do you believe in cheat days? I kind of answered this earlier, and I think... I don't believe in cheat days because I said like my cheat is still real food. A lot of people's cheat days is like going and smashing out a Little Caesars pizza, a bunch of soda and cake and pastries and candy and even people that, you know, if it fits your macros, even people like that, it's like, oh, these five gummy bears still fit my macros, so it's okay. And it's like, like again, my priority is my brain health. And I know X, Y, and Z are destroying it and A, B, and C aren't. So when it comes to a cheat meal, my idea of a cheat meal is like, we'll make homemade pizza or go to Whole Foods and get a slice. You know, it's minimal ingredients, they're real food, or we'll go get sushi or something like that. And that's not even that often. Like, especially being on a ketogenic diet, like the, the satiety factor of burning fat for fuel and eating fat and getting, again, a bulk of vegetables, you don't, you don't miss it, especially how you feel and how your brain thinks and how your brain feels. Like, you don't miss the stuff to have it to be called a cheat day. Now, it's all context. And like, I follow a ketogenic diet and lifestyle. So for me, a cheat meal would be something that's going over in carbohydrates. So it could be a sweet potato, which actually that is like a cheat for me every now and then. It's a cooked sweet potato with some grass fed butter and then some cinnamon and mix it up, have it on the side of some steak and some vegetables and that's technically a cheat meal for my diet, but everyone's different. So at the end of the day, it's just context. And if you're prioritizing your brain, you'll make different choices. And that's what I encourage everyone to do is think about what is happening to your brain by consuming X, Y, and Z food-like product. And then you'll think again about your cheat meal and what that looks like. Uh, number eight, how often do you ride your bike now? So I'm really glad that whoever asked that asked that because it looks very different today. Um, I think it's been over a week and a half since I've ridden, actually. I've been been on the road quite a bit. I've been working on a lot of projects. I'm in the middle of writing two different books right now. Um, really excited about that. I'm speaking to a publisher, uh, two publishers, so I'm really stoked on that. But with that being said, you know, the third brain tumor diagnosis in 2017 led me on this path of be, you know, becoming more clear around my purpose, and that's to help people. And uh, I want people to learn from my journey and be proactive rather than reactive. Another reason why I'm doing this live. I I'm very open about everything in my life and I want to share it so that way people can become the healthiest, happiest, and most successful versions of themselves rather than suffering or being told at 21 like I was that you're going to die. Like I don't think people need to go through that. I think I needed to because I was able to and I, the path I was on wasn't a healthy path and it's changed my perspective in who I am today, 180. So you know, today riding is just, I have no obligations anymore. I don't have any sponsors, you know, to fulfill their needs or contests to get ready for, or to go to, or things like that. It's just, it's just back to basics. It's back to, I ride when I want to ride because I want to ride, you know? And when I started riding at 13, I, I didn't miss a day unless I was sick or had the injuries, things like that. And the longest time I've been off my bike was in 2015 after an ACL reconstructive surgery where I was out just shy of four months. And now I'm at the point where it's like, I'm so fulfilled being on purpose for my mission in life to help people. And I enjoy every bit of it. I enjoy the building of a business and the stress that comes with it and the problem solving. I enjoy the uncomfortable um, moments of, you know, getting on stage and speaking, which is another aspect that I'm pursuing in life today, which my dad says I'm crazy about. Um, but I enjoy all these things because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about the people that I'm trying to help. It's about the people that are in my shoes when I was 21, whether what, whatever age they're at, and that I wish I had these tools and these mindset, uh, you know, tips and tricks back then. And that's why I share what I share. So it was a long winded answer to how often do you ride your bike now? But it's it could be I didn't ride for two weeks a month ago, and then I rode for two days, and then I left for a week, and then I rode for a day, and then I rode for three days, and. Um, Yaka, he's a 14 year old Slovenian BMX athlete I'm coaching. And when he comes over, we'll ride all the time. Um, it just depends. And it's just, it's not a priority to me anymore. It's something that, uh, led me to where I am today. And it, it showed me so much, it, it saved my life, literally like 
figuratively and literally it saved my life because like I said before, if I hadn't hit my head riding that day, I wouldn't get the MRI because I was being denied MRIs, being fed pain pills. Um, ironically, we have this opioid epidemic yet. It, they wouldn't give me a scan. They kept feeding them to me. But um, yeah, it's just, it's done a lot for me, but now I'm, I'm ready to move on. And that's on a personal note, that was a struggle for me a year and a half, two years ago with an identity crisis of who I am. Um, if I'm not riding anymore, like who am I, you know, I'm, but again, it's, it's not what we do that defines us. It's, it's who we are in the moment and what we think and what we're trying to accomplish in our lives. And if you're on purpose to help other people, then you know things in the past don't really matter anymore. And BMX is one of them that I wouldn't say doesn't matter to me. I love it, but it's just not a priority to ride anymore. And I'm doing other things that I enjoy. And sometimes the bikes come with me, sometimes it's not. I'm, I'm always itching to ride, but I got these other priorities that take over. So it just it is what it is. What was your most memorable BMX stunt? So there's a couple, there's a couple that instantly stand out to me. Um, 2009, April 2009 in Joplin, Missouri, I landed a trick called a 360 bar spin, bar spin to tail whip. So it's basically when you do a 360 on your bike, you're on the bike and you're doing a 360. At the same time, you're spinning the handlebars around once, twice, you catch, and then you're holding the handlebars and you kick the back end of the bike around called a tail whip. And you do all that before you land. And I did that, I tried it over and over in the best trick contest and I got it on the ninth or 10th attempt and I won a Harley for it. And I actually won first place at the actual contest that same weekend. And it was the like one of the best, it was my first contest I ever won too. So it was like one of the best feelings. But another m memorable BMX stunt, I mean, there's so many that come to mind now that I think about it from like filming projects where you just, you have whatever timeline and you just try a trick over and over again until you get it. And a lot of them are really scary and a lot of them are really risky, but that's the difference between a contest and a filming project. Uh, I'd say the second one I can think about is probably the first time I did a bar spin when I was like 13 or 14. And it was just um, that. And the first time I did a tail whip when I was like 15 or 16, it was just the greatest feeling of my life. Just you work so hard to do a trick and then you land it and it's just, it's just insane how that feels. And it's just like any aspect of life. If you fall down, you get up, you try again, you keep persevering and, and really working towards your goal. When you meet your goal, one, it, it progresses because now that's your goal in the past. So you want to set new goals. But two, the feeling you get of accomplishing something that you work so hard for and all the blood, sweat and tears, like as cliche as it sounds, it's real. And once you uh, land that trick, it's just it, nothing beats it. So my first tail whip and then that best trick contest where I uh, invented and landed for the first time, the double bar spin to tail whip winning me a Harley was a pretty cool moment. Uh, so that's all the questions that were submitted. So I'm going to go through here real quick. And in the meanwhile, if you guys got any other questions about anything I've talked about, put them in the comment section. And um, yeah, I don't really have anywhere to go. I'm just waiting for uh, my girlfriend's uh, friend to get home and help me with some secret stuff. But I uh, can't share because she might be watching. <laughs> um, hello, Love Wild Planet Foods. Congratulations on the positive outcomes from your health. Thank you so much. What is that? NM. 5070. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the love and I appreciate all of you and your time for hopping on here, especially. Um, smelly, yes, but it's delicious. That's true. It, it's funny when people look at me when I'm on the plane, I just pop them out and just go to town. Um, how do you eat the sardines? Okay, so that was a part I covered in here, but just in short, in case you missed it, I love topping my salads with them. Uh, I love eating them right out of the can when I'm on the road. I'll, uh, if I, like today, I haven't gone grocery shopping in a little bit, so I need to get some stuff. So I'll take a bowl and I'll chop up um, or I'll dice up like an avocado. I'll throw the sardines on there and then like I love like pepperoncinis and I'll dice those up, throw it on top, throw some uh, Redmond sea salt and some pepper, maybe a little bit of garlic. Um, and then, yeah, super simple. I saute them with peppers and onions. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds really good. Garlic, onion, turmeric, salt, pepper. Heck yeah. Um, let's see. What type of fish do you recommend to fuel a workout? Um, so that's gonna be your your personal preference. I mean, and there's so much context like that I need in order to give a valid response that I'd feel good about. Um, but really, you know, I mean, Wild Planet offers so many different types of fish. So it's like whatever your preference is, it's gonna be a good quality protein and get some fat in there. The the Wild Planet sardines and the olive oil and lemon juice actually have I think 11 grams of fat and 18 protein per serving of three ounces. So 
That's perfect. I mean, it depends on, you know, if you're following um, a ketogenic diet or if you're following um, a standard American diet or a paleo diet or all, there's so much context needed. But at the end of the day, any, any fish from wild plant is going to be something great to consume because it's got the fats and the proteins. Let's see. All right. I'm sorry. There's lots of people saying what's up. I uh, appreciate all the love. Hello, everyone. Um, and you haven't had a heart attack yet. No, I, I mean, that was a long time ago. I've made a lot of changes since, but it was funny saying that, thinking about that because I could have gotten diabetes. I've had friends that have got diabetes and I got a brain tumor. So again, genetics work differently. That's why epigenetics is so important because the expression of genes one way or another, like you can really make lifestyle choices to change them. And the hard sell with preventative holistic health is the fact that we don't know when something is gonna happen to you down the road. So being proactive rather than reactive is what I love to promote and what I wish I was doing, what I'm doing now. So I don't really wish it because I'm doing it now and it's led me to where I am. But yeah, I, it's a, there's so many things that could have happened to me the way I used to eat and live. It's insane. I was, I was way too young. I don't think drinking that much alcohol at any age, but I, my brain wasn't fully developed back then. I had past concussions. I was eating tons of sugar. Like there's so many things that could have happened. And thankfully, you know, my experience led me where I am today. So it is what it is. All right, let's see. Yes, it was all junk food I used to eat. And uh, awesome, you love their chicken. That's great. Their chicken is good. Actually, I've been feeding my cats. I've been putting them on a keto diet recently, and I've been feeding them uh, some of the sardines and some of the uh, salmon and tuna and mixing it up with some coconut oil and some, uh, some cat vitamin mixes and probiotics and prebiotics. So it's great. Your workout is a 15-month-old. Yeah, I bet that's, that's a good amount of work. Um, Awesome. Summer is almost here. Yeah, it'll be warm out. Get, get your walk on. Maybe go do some hikes. You love going on family bike rides? Yeah, I, I think that's awesome. I mean, I'm a fan of any bike. Topic for the day, please. Um, uh, I think you missed that, but I don't have time to go through all this again. But just go back and check it out, and you'll see. You can fast forward through stuff. Um, what other questions we got? Sorry, there's lots of people saying what's up and liking, joining. Uh, do you send to eat the same meal? Do you? Uh, I guess it's a typo. Do you tend to eat the same meals over and over for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Um, I used to just because I I'm a I'm a creature of habit, and if I find something that works and that tastes good and that I enjoy, especially if it's quick and easy, then. I have no problem doing it over and over again. Now, a little over a year, no, two years now, um, no, a little over a year ago when Jackie moved in, um, that's when all that changed because she couldn't handle it. So she uh, she changes stuff up and it's it's nice actually. I love having that. It's a good variety. But yeah, I'm like, if I find a groove, like one staple I do consistently eat more times than not is my salad that I shared earlier, whether that's with the wild planet sardines and avocado or it's um, chicken thigh or turkey thigh or it's a burger salad. You can't beat the salads. I mean, especially if you're on a ketogenic diet, like you get all the bulk of the vegetables, like you get all the fats in there. It's easy to do. You can bring it anywhere. So there's no excuses if you got to work somewhere, travel somewhere. And But um, yeah, I don't know. I Like I said, I like, I like routine and Jackie helps me get out of that sometimes. Um, let's see. Why keto? Okay, so in short, I follow a ketogenic diet because of past brain tumor and brain uh, injuries. So a ketogenic diet has been shown to help repair the brain and the metabolic dysfunction, specifically with the mitochondria that become damaged from um, traumatic uh, brain injuries. So. Uh, what happens in short is, it, or can happen, is with traumatic brain injuries, the mitochondria, um, for lack of better words, become broken and can't metabolize um, food and oxygen to create energy as well. And the brain neurons start to die and the cells start to die and things like that. And so you become glucose intolerant basically in the brain. And then inflammation comes on and just eating the way I was eating, <laughs> copious amounts of sugar and processed foods and alcohol and stress and all that. Um, chronic levels of blood sugar, raised blood sugar, lead to all these different processes and mechanisms that destroy your brain. So simply put, why I follow keto is for the health of my brain. And there's tons of research out there. Um, Dr. Ryan Lowry on Instagram, Ryan P. Lowry, um, and his partner, Dr. Jacob Wilson, which is his Instagram is a muscle PhD. They wrote a great book called The Ketogenic Bible. 
it goes in and out of everything you need to know about ketogenic diet and the therapeutic uses of it. But um, also Dr. Perlmutter, Dr. David Perlmutter's book, Grain Brain, I mentioned that earlier, that's what led me onto the ketogenic diet and the high fat, low carb lifestyle. It's all about brain health and everything. And um, Dr. Ryan Lowry and Jake Wilson, they have a, a facility called the Applied Sports Performance Institute, and they do a lot of work with athletes, but also with Parkinson's and focusing on the brain. And Ryan and I are actually going to aiming clinics uh, first week of April to get spec images of our brain with and without exogenous ketones to see how they interact with the brain. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so much research out there to go look into and resources, um, podcasts and stuff like that. But um, I follow a ketogenic diet uh, for many reasons and primarily for the health of my brain. But let's see, we got any other questions? And Jenna's home. What's up, Jenna? Um, do you got any questions that I could add to this? I'm wrapping up this live for Wild Planets, uh, Wild Planet Foods, and we come to the end. But do you have any questions that you think would be interesting for me to share? I don't think so. Okay, she's shy. Um, <laughs> all right, sweet. Well, I appreciate all of you tuning in, and I appreciate Wild Planet Foods for allowing me to take over their Instagram and do this live with everyone. Thanks to everyone that submitted the questions and that submitted questions in here. If any of you got, you know, you had any more questions, just reach out to me on my Instagram, Josh Perry BMX. Send me a DM, comment any of my posts. I'm super active on there. I do my best to respond as much as I can. If anyone wants any more information around Gamma Knife or the ketogenic diet or BMX or anything, just just hit me up. And um, until next time, hope all is well. Appreciate all of you. Love all of you. And have a great day. Peace.